Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism and Real Solar System. In this episode I was gonna start off with this rocket on the pad so that we could just get on with it, but it tends to rip itself apart on the pad randomly. Now we've launched this type of rocket before, the Mondo 1, we launched it in the previous episode, and I don't see anything in particular about the lander that should cause it to rip itself apart. Uh, we got a docking port, we got the control unit under the docking port, of course, that's normal. Batteries, the lander can, solar panels, this tank right here, baguettes, we've got the spark in the middle of the baguettes, uh, maybe that's causing a problem with the baguette colliders, but they can't be that big, I mean, they should end right there. Um, decoupler, uh, another tank, uh, more tanks, the engine right here, the terrier, um, maybe it can't be clipped that far in, but that's unusual. Oh, no, it's doing it again. It's, uh, well, that's not, not as violent as it was the previous times. Separates on that plane for some reason. You know? No, but shaking itself. And this time it wasn't from that line. It was the boosters oscillating in and out. Did I add struts? To, maybe I added struts to the boosters afterwards. I forgot about that. I think I forgot about that on the subassembly, maybe. Let's see. Well, hopefully we're getting all the explosions out of the way right at the beginning. Yeah, I think I manually put some struts on the boosters. Yeah, okay, I think I forgot those on the subassembly. Shoot. Mm. Oh, it seems better. The flag, yeah, it's just the flag jittering. Magic of struts, I tell you. Okay. Alrighty, well, nobody's on board, that's the important thing. And there's the lunar transfer vehicle that we need to use to get this over to the moon. There's been a problem with data transmitter on Ike Scanner. Well, we don't really care about that anymore. Okay, there we go. Good relative inclination. Coming out of time warp doesn't shake it to pieces. Okay, well. Mmm. Where's the Delta V? Okay. Launch. Uh, looks like the plumes have been fixed, and thanks for the suggestions on that. Looks like Restock was trying to handle the plumes separately from real plumes. So just a reminder of what I've got in here, it's mostly just uh, visual mods except for Real Solar System, Real Solar System Visual Enhancements, which is of course just a visual mod, and, um, and Kerbalism. So no, no Smurf, no real fuels, really nothing that edits these parts at all except for the looks with restock. So all the stock parts are what you would expect them to be. And I find feel that that's important at this phase as we attempt a stockish mission to the moon, Earth's moon. I do have Mechjeb and uh, KIS, KAS, so those are functionality mods. KIS and KES also have parts included. Uh, Kerbalism does also have parts of its own. Okay, booster set. And hopefully we'll recover those. Interesting sound. Wondering why, well anyway, they all flip sort of differently. We have to toss the rocket pretty high instead of what I'd normally do for a uh, real, real solar system trajectory. And that's because of the heavy tanks mainly and the heavy engines. We need extra time to burn more fuel in order to compensate for that. But as you can sort of see, the rendezvous situation in realism overhaul isn't any 
more difficult than in regular stock games. I do want to sort of encourage people, I mean of course if you're a stock player uh, by all means, but you know to just give Real Solar System a try to get a sense of it, not necessarily to uh, devote your life to it and embrace it fully or anything like that, but we got the blue region, which apparently does not affect those fairings. Hmm. Anyway, uh, but yeah, just uh, get a feel for how it's different. Somebody in the comments had asked about what Kerbalism does, and I felt like that was a difficult question to answer on the spot there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that it does, and uh, the Kerbalism menu is... Where are you? Oh, wait, staging. out there. Uh, Kerbalism does a lot of stuff and this is the Kerbalism menu and it does failures. I, I don't think we have any uh, good mission to give an example of but it does life support, food, water, and oxygen. It does failures. It does radiation and radiation shielding um, which we really haven't uh, done a test on yet. We haven't really seen that in action in real solar system yet. Uh, so there will be random failures, uh, you have to watch out for Kerbal Radiation and their resources. And there are solar events that can cause more radiation. Mm, I'm trying to think if there's any really big... And then uh, modules have their own environmental... Oh, and uh, life support regeneration like uh, greenhouses and stuff like that. And uh, crew morale, stress, and all that business. So, pretty all-encompassing as far as the sort of crew aspect of realism goes, and the part failure aspect of realism. Um, not dealing with uh, the stuff that realism overhaul normally deals with, which is the fuels. And really, the core of realism overhaul is real fuels and what Realism Overhaul started out as was adjusting all the engines and parts, you know, the tanks and all, to deal with the real fuels from the real fuels mod. And most of the actual changes that Realism Overhaul depends on is from real fuels. And then second to that is FAR, Fair Aerospace, which changes the aerodynamics. After that, uh, different mods have been added in, but those were the first two big ones. And so in, uh, instead of doing liquid fuel and oxidizer, we'd have the real fuels. And then Realism Overhaul would change the engines to real engines so that these would turn into the J2s, which would burn the hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, they'd weigh a certain amount, which would probably be... I don't know, actually, they're probably not too different from what they weigh right now. Um, the tanks would all weigh less, like you might expect from Smurf. But that's the main functionality of Realism Overhaul. And then it changes some pods and other parts to be their real-life counterparts, especially if they look like those real-life counterparts. You know, if uh, you've got a mod that has a Apollo Lunar Lander, then you figure that in Realism Overhaul it ought to be configured as the Apollo Lunar Module. So that's one thing it does. But um, by default, Realism Overhaul doesn't handle the life support. That's an option with TAC life support. And it sort of helps that out, but it's possible to use Realism Overhaul with Kerbalism instead if we figure that out. The key is that Realism Overhaul assumes TAC life support and puts a certain amount of food, water, and oxygen based on how fast TAC life support consumes those. So that has to be adjusted. It probably needs to be adjusted in Kerbalism because it's realism overall standard to assume that we're talking about liters for everything. And then, uh, yeah, you just have to figure out uh, how many liters Kerbalism should consume. And maybe it's already about right anyway. So I'm trying to get into a lower orbit. Uh, is that a good idea or is it behind? It's behind us. Okay, cancel that. I'll get into a higher orbit then. 
I didn't really put a whole lot of antennae on here. Let's get the solar panels out though. And the reason I didn't put an antenna on here is it seems to have the internal range that could go all the way to the moon, so we'll see. Okay, we are in orbit. I'm watching that closest approach distance. I'll shut it off. Once that closest approach distance is half the distance to target. So it'll take two orbits roughly to rendezvous. We'll keep this stage. I mean, we've got infinite ignitions. Now, here at Apoapsis, what I'd like to do is lift the periapsis so it matches the target orbit. Right now, we're under the target orbit on that side, but we are supposed to be over the target orbit all the way around. Unfortunately, our apparent encounter is right over Florida, so that's nice. And we're hoping to transfer fuel from this stage into the transfer stage to top it off. Let's see where our satellites are. We've got that low ping satellite on top. But it depends on what it's communicating with. Oh, we've lost communication. I'll just keep it to my previous command. Um, no, I think it's the low ping sat that doesn't have any sort of target to communicate with. I don't have a low log ground stations, so we'll just let this drift for the time being. There we go. We've got it back. Just a brief hiccup. Okay, so there's the stage that's supposed to do the docking. Uh, the other bit doesn't have RCS. Okay, we have a connection. All good. Now let's uh, transfer the fuel from here. And we're just going to leave this as a derelict stage. Oh, but it doesn't have a controller on it, so we don't have much of a choice. Off it goes. And now we have our spacecraft. And this is locked. This is locked. Those are locked. And we have RCS off. And we have 3,311 meters per second, which is enough to transfer to the moon. So, calculations were correct. All is good. Let's do it. Let's transfer it over to the moon. Now I have to decide whether to put things prograde or retrograde around the moon. Ooh, that's a bit of an inclination. We can correct that with a mid-course adjustment, though. I think I will just go prograde around the moon rather than retrograde. Apollo went retrograde, and that was to get the free return. How long do we need for the transfer? It's a nine minute burn, so we gotta watch out for that. Nine minutes. Not a usual thing with a cheetah engine, but here we are. That is the engine that's on. Staging is all over the place. We'll see whether the communication situation is still okay. That's a open question at this point. Again, no additional antennae. It's just what's in the cores. And apparently that's enough if you've got the antenna range multiplied by 10, but either that or I misread the ranges. <laughs> Could happen. Okay, here we go. Whoa, wait, wait, the node is over. Wait, 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 what? Why is it acting like it's imbalanced? Those are, those are the only off-center thing. I mean, I can't imagine why. Um, we have to actually check what we're controlling from. Ah, we were controlling from the wrong place. Actually, burns to the moon aren't too sensitive. Well, this is a nice scene. Looking good. Definitely looking good. Okay, because of the initial burns that had a higher cost than I wanted, but let's see. That looks nice. Okay, and that's just 22 meters per second for the mid-course adjustment. 
We are we are powering up. We don't have any shielding on this, so we're we're testing out the radiation the hard way, if you will. But it's still a short mission altogether. Now, Kerbalism for Realism Overhaul is being worked on. I'm just uh, seeing how it is without those adjustments. So to get into orbit around the moon, the transfer took about 3,200. And then after three days and 17 hours and four day trip in total, we're going to make orbit using about 800 meters per second. And I'll expend this state. Well, obviously there isn't much left to this. This was just a transfer stage. And, but we'll use the RCS on here as well, the mod propellant. And then this stage will do the rest. And then this stage will also start us on descent. And what we have here will finish descent and then get it back to orbit. But of course that's all later. Communication is fine so far, so it's looking good on that. I'm not saying that we could send good TV transmissions back, but we have entered Lunar SOI. We should I get an achievement? Wait, there is a world's first milestone thing. Rendezvous maneuver, first station around Earth, I guess it counts. First flyby of the moon, yep. Docking maneuver on Earth, uh, okay. And we recovered the boosters, of course. That's very, very important. Though we lost a few stages. Yes, the core and the skiff stage. Now we do have to watch out for communications around the moon, but it looks okay. Really, we only need like 300 to capture into orbit. It just takes a lot more to get into a low orbit around the moon. I do have Ma propellant in here that's being used. I don't really want that. Well, you know, I mean, it doesn't have RCS on it, so. Hmm. Maybe it's for the best to dump it right now. Okay, with, with that, we have already made orbit around the moon. Oops. I am leaving a lot of stages just hanging out. So this has 1,600, and I suppose we can unlock the fuels to assess the full situation here. Make sure there's no cross-feeding that we didn't want. Now, the lander is landing directly on its baguettes, which I've always felt was the way to go. So 4,700 in total right now. Let's get these out again. Normally I'd budget more for a lunar landing. This is pretty tight. Oh wait, we've got extra fuel here. Okay, not so tight anymore. Now it's about what I'd normally budget, which is 4,800, uh, 2,600 for landing, 2,200 for return to orbit. So 4,800 for all the business after we get into orbit. So we're good. But that's overdoing it actually. You can do it with less. And that's a nice tight orbit around the moon. Now we will frequently lose communication like this. But the next mission is going to have crew on board, and we'll see what it can do. That communication situation won't be critical then. Okay, so I guess we launch a Kerbal to the moon at this point. Okay, so let me introduce our Earth return vehicle, which is also what will transfer the Kerbal over to the moon. And it is a single Kerbal mission. Uh, I think it'll be Valentina. I think that's the best way to go here. Valentin doesn't have any experience points right now, shockingly enough. So, did that change? That must have changed when I introduced Real Solar System. Obviously, we had gotten her experience before, but now 
it's starting from scratch again apparently but yeah so there is a docking port down here we've got RCS thrusters in a pinch if uh, the RCS thrusters fail or something and we can't dock of course Valentina will still be able to EVA from one pod to another so that's not a big problem this has lots of mod propellants well compared to its size and um, yeah we've got two spark engines here and those are what we need to get back so those can't really fail <laughs> um, uh, we really need those to work otherwise it's a rescue mission and that could get complicated um, potentially we could keep the lander docked to it and use the lander's engine to do the burn we would probably separate this uh, move the fuel over and separate that. Well, no, but the docking port's down here. It's gonna be complicated if one of the spark engines fail. Hopefully they can last for 14 days. That's the maximum amount of time we expect the mission to take. And so we have oxygen. It says 15 days, 5 hours, and uh, nitrogen's good, and food is 15 days, and it says 20 hours, so I'm assuming these are real solar system days and not Kerbin days. It says Earth up there, so We'll give that a test, and again, I've got no radiation shielding. I don't know if uh, what the radiation situation for Valentin is right now. Actually, we'll we'll see once we get outside. Uh, this is a terrier stage here, and then the rest of the rocket is the same. I made sure to put on the extra struts, uh, rerun the fuel lines, and also uh, checked on the prioritization on the tank so that these empty first. So. Let's see what happens. Valentina, you are in. All right, let's go. Obviously, we could have tested this out without a Kerbal, but some of the systems like life support aren't going to work without a Kerbal, so we're doing it with a Kerbal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously, well, let's get that away for the time being. It says oxygen perpetual, but that's because we're on the ground. All right stuff and let's line up with the moon it's a precarious looking system when you see that tiny little pod on this huge thing obviously if we used a um, more Apollo like capsule it would probably look a little bit better but we needed things to be light everything it's a little bit wiggly but it looks alright throttle up SAS is on and launch. So I edited Scatterer to get rid of that yellow tint, but I sort of want some tint. It's looking very unscatterish, scatterer ish like right now. There's something like sun extinction or something like that, and if you set it to false, it gets rid of the yellow tint. If it's true it has the yellow tint. What would be nice is if we could set the tint a little bit. Like the strength of it or the color of it. But possibly there's a setting around somewhere for that. Okay, we have definitely made it through, through max Q with this precarious looking thing. So, things are good. And separation of boosters. All right. Okay, we are in space and about to finish this stage. There we go. Set. And for, uh, not spark, for skiff engines. Okay, set. And now, the Wolfhound. We'll have to use this stage to finish orbit, the Cheetah stage. Okay, getting ready for staging. Again. So many stagings. And stage. We can flatten out here. It's been a long trip. <laughs> We're 11 minutes into, into the launch. 
Okay, getting ready for shutdown, and that's good enough. 233 by 162, and we should have enough fuel to go to the moon, make orbit, and return. But there's also other activities like rendezvousing with the lander, so let's see. Um, so we get to about there, and then if we do a mid-course adjustment instead of doing it all at once... The original burn was like 3170, so about 40 meters per second more than this. But I think if we just do it in two burns, we can... It's just a 6 meter per second correction at that point. So, okay, that'll do. Let's do this first. We have to hang out for an hour and 8 minutes, though. Let's extend solar panels. How much radiation... Wait, extend solar panels. How much radiation does Valentina have right now? Was that reset? Uh, no, she she has the radiation that she had after the detox thing. So she's got 11% radiation. So she had used the sick bay to reduce it, but she does have that radiation. But for reference, she's got 11% right now, and we'll see how much she has when she gets back. Everything else is zero. And it says food 15 days, water 24 days for some reason, oxygen 15 days. I thought I'd made water 15 days as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. But oh well. I mean, I did reduce it, you can see. But maybe there's some recycling system? I don't know. I don't see one. Okay, melt time warping. We really should have had more electric charge. It's been around. Uh, 0.13 per second is really high. That's 10 minutes left that we have right now. Mm, I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, uh, shoot. Well, people always advise me that I should have fuel cells. Did I have fuel cells? No, of course not. <sighs> But does this engine replenish electric charge at all? Hmm. Yes, but we'll have to use that judiciously. We'll do what we gotta do. Okay, so that should give us about 15 minutes. And then I actually want to bring that back down because it's not efficient to burn when it's that high up. Okay, let's drift a little bit more to this side. We might actually catch some sunlight soon. Let's see. So we're actually bringing the periapsis really far down. Let's see how long that gives us. Will it get us into daylight? Yeah, okay. We're in daylight. Let's replot for the moon. This isn't going to be good. Yeah, it's costing more just to get there because we're higher up and we don't have as much of that uh, juicy Oberth effect. We're going to need the lander to give us some fuel in order to get back. Well, we're gonna give it a go. And then we'll, we can certainly make orbit around the moon. The question is what we do after that. We would like to rendezvous with the lander as quickly as possible because it has batteries. Well, it has more batteries anyway. We'll at least get Val Valentina over to the moon. What happens after that? Who knows? Okay, and stage. Now on the Terrier. Well, that's in line with our target. Uh, crossing the radiation belt. Yes, we're very interested in what happens here. 17% already. Went from 11 to 17% crossing the radiation belts. No shielding, of course. I mean, we can meet up with it in one orbit. The problem is surviving that one orbit. <laughs> oh, jeez. But orbits around the moon tend to be fairly long. 
So they're not short. Hmm. I mean, we can play, pull the same. I don't know if the poodle makes electric. Or not the poodle. The terrier makes electric charge. The sparks don't. So if we get down to this stage, we're in trouble, and we will be on this stage. Oh boy. At this point, I think we should just go out to the moon and come back. Maybe we should just change it to a free return this time. I think we've got a sort of critical issue here. Instead of attempting to rendezvous and land and everything, I think we should just skip that this time. We've made a mistake. So we are going to do a mid-course adjustment to switch to the free return. Okay, um, that's a free return in six days. So we are aborting this attempt. And but Valentina will enter the SOI of the moon at least. I hope we'll be decent on the way back. I don't know. I mean, it looks like we're gonna be coming back on the nighttime side there. Hopefully that's not. Hopefully that's not gonna take too long. Okay, we are in lunar SOI, so let's do some science. We're passing pretty high up over the moon, so it doesn't affect us too much. Mm, crew report. board. Well, of course I kept this spare because the lander is the one that's supposed to have the instruments. Well, there's the moon, mysterious as always. We are not going to get low over the moon. Oh, no, the electric charge went. Um, run the engines. Wait, is, oh, this, the terrier doesn't provide. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah. Please survive, Valentino. Please survive. I don't know how long the moon is going to cover up the sun. Okay, we got back. We got back. We, we, we good. And now I did a little bit of a burn there. Let's see. Okay, that has us on a suborbital trajectory right now. So let's turn. Whew. It was only a little while. It was only a little while. It's tough to decide exactly what altitude I should be aiming for here. I could try to stay safe and use our delta V to slow down once we get there. But then I might want to actually test whether the heat shield works properly and Valentina manages to land safely. Okay, return trip time. Bye bye moon. Uh, there's Earth. Have we done crew report and EVA high over the Earth? No. Okay, we got those. And this time we don't have an engine. Well, at least a periapsis seems to be like on the Terminator over there. But we'll be covered up for this part. Hopefully that won't take too long. Oh, it all went very quickly. Exposed to extreme radiation on top of everything else. How's 27% on the radiation? 28. Okay, we've got power at least. 25% stress and 28% radiation. There's no way. Uh, well, I mean, of course, shielding and all that stuff. So, uh, I, I don't know. How much shielding did the Apollo command module have? I don't recall it having lead shielding. But Okay. I don't think they got that much of their radiation dose done. How's our resources? Food, eight days. Water, we seem to have more than we started out with. I don't know. And oxygen, okay. All right, well. I'll slow down with this stage just a little bit. Okay. So this is not gonna be as harsh as a normal lunar return. And actually, I just attached this with the docking port to save on the mass of the decoupler because I'm really tight on masses these days. Okay, so decouple. All right, well, we're going to have to separate this off, but not until the very last moment because then we're on internal power only, which 
We need solar panels on this, obviously, now. Now we know. Off. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, min pressure 0.3 should be fine. I'm arming that. We're in the blue phase. G-forces will be pretty high. We don't have a descent mode thing on here. That was an interesting explosion for the service module. Yeah, I don't know if I approve of those explosion effects. Looks like we're over India. Good times. There goes a little bit of our leftovers. Oh, please don't go around. Oh, shoot. That won't be good. Um, come on. Uh, uh, no, no, don't go around. Don't go around. Don't go around. Don't go around. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, here, maybe I could just have it. It's got a powerful reaction wheel and everything. Uh, okay, no, 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 that's too much, that's too much, that's too much. Uh, apparently even a little bit of a tilt is quite a lot. Yeah, we can't really do descent mode like this. Uh-oh. Because we don't have any solar panels and we don't have any battery life. Well, then we lose, like... Jeb on our first mission out to Kerbin's Moon. I'm not feeling very good about Valentina's chances at this point. We've got a whole two hour orbital period, but we don't have two hours of electric charge. More radiation. <laughs> this is the worst radiation situation right here. Uh, in exposed to intense radiation. Yeah, she's got 50% already. She's like mutating. And we're coming down on the dark side. She hasn't died from the electric charge issue. Maybe I was overreacting on the electric charge. And then it kills her. I don't know. Uh, well, the sun's not going to help us this time except to see the pod. Hopefully it can orient itself fine without electric charge. We should be coming down this time. And we are over Eastern Africa, head for Arabia. I don't know what these random island formations are sometimes. It's definitely not supposed to be there. Well, we're gonna land in Arabia. I think this is the first time I've ever set a capsule down in Arabia. Okay, hopefully it doesn't take us too long to get down to the surface as far as the electric charge is concerned. But boy, 50% radiation. I don't know, I assume, like, in realism overall, the parachutes would deploy without the electric charge, but... Okay, yes. We have parachute deployment. And at this point... I don't know if... <laughs> At the last minute, electric charge bites us. No, hopefully not. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to... 6 meters per second, which is good. Let me double check. 9.2 Gs was the worst experienced. Ooh, and we ablated the heat shield at the last minute. Okay, well, uh, defying all the odds, Valentina's back, recover vessel. So I don't know if an uncrewed test would have had the same electric charge depletion. I think that's because we have a Kerbal. So even doing an uncrewed test would have not necessarily told me that problem. Though I might have noticed that our electric charge was a little bit low on launch because I just see the, t uh, the resource bar. We got some science. Valentina got some experience. And we're going to have to try again for that mission. But we have our lander in place. We just need to uh, do the thing right next time. So I'll leave that for next time. 
and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.